Right, so welcome along. Thank you very much for hopping on and listening to this uh, next iPhotography podcast, or if you happen to be watching it on YouTube, um, hello and uh, welcome to the video. Uh, again, you've got myself, Stephen, and as you can see, or you'll be able to hear now, we've also got Tutor Nick as well. Hi there. So today we have just got a kind of quite a little simple uh, chat we wanted to have talking about the best three lenses every photographer needs, or at least miss kind of combating or confronting the myth that sometimes uh, people believe that there are three types of lenses, like a holy trinity of lenses that um, everybody, every photographer is led to believe that they actually need in their camera bug. So we want to discuss whether that's kind of true. It may completely be, um, but also it, it's just for people that are brand new to photography to actually understand, you know, what these kind of three lenses are. You know, if you're looking at getting a couple of lenses for a new camera, etc., you know, what, what kind of a good all round lens is, uh, is, is meant to to be and you know what we should be looking for really so so with nick i've got uh, a couple of questions really so it's effectively i'll just dive straight in my first one is oh. something that everybody says that you always need a 50 millimeter prime regardless of what you shoot now is that true Ooh, it's a tricky one that one i'm going to think the the 50 millimeter lens thing it, i mean it goes way back doesn't it but since you know before the days of digital photography and it kind of relates to the fact that um if you had a 35 mil uh camera uh and it was to do with the film size and the fact that to get uh a 50 mil lens gave you approximately the same kind of viewpoint as you got from the naked eye if you're using yeah. 35 mil uh film whereas if you used that say a medium format or a large format then it wouldn't have been a 50 mil um lens so it it all stems back to that and i believe i mean i've got a a straightforward dslr that's kind of approximately the same as the old 35 mil cameras but i believe you can get um different ones now with different size uh uh, monis uh, whatever you call them you know so, so they capture on a, a, over a smaller area so obviously yeah. for that you you know it wouldn't be a 50 mil lens it would be a different size but i mean the, i always think that the, the, i mean they're really handy lenses to have um I, I, and i think if you could if you only had one lens and that was all yeah. you could have then 50 mil for a 35 mil camera is you know pretty much the ideal one really i, I was i think you're right i think the, the 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 odd kind of old film cameras that i've seen you know every now and again when they've been on like car boot sales or junk sales etc that they've always got like a, a 50 mil or a 35 mil lens attached to them you know it, it whether yeah. that was the kit lens you know of the time like we have 18 to 55 or 16 to 55 these days um those kind of fixed primes were were just suitable as you say for all round types of photography because they're great for portraits aren't they yeah yeah pretty much and i think that you know back then they were just known as a standard lens uh, mm -hmm. i don't think people talked about prime or zoom lenses uh, it, it would have been your standard lens for 35 mil camera and as you say good for portraits good for landscapes just a good all-round lens uh, that sees things as you see it mm. and uh, you know you've got a fairly restricted field of view with one but it and also obviously you, you, you know it's a fixed field of view as well as it is with any prime lens so you've got to sort of compose you know if if, if you're a slave to composing in camera then obviously you're you're, you're stuck to that format as well yeah yeah you're i right. think that's a good thing i actually think that's a good thing because i think quite often with the say if you use a zoom lens you've always got this thing, oh shall i zoom it in a bit or zoom it out a bit or mess about with it you know what shall yeah. i go for so I yeah think having a fixed lens uh is is quite good and it's a really good lens i'd say to start with and quite often i guess if you bought i don't know if, if, if you're buying a camera that's got a fixed lens on it where you can't change the lenses it probably would be you know a similar lens it would be you know either a 50 mil or equivalent to give you uh you know that field of view yeah i, I used to have a, a fuji that was like that it was um it was a fixed lens it was 23 mil which on the crop sensor took it to basically a 35 yeah. mil uh equivalent yeah. which yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, 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 it's it was great but it, it did educate me a lot 
uh, on moving into the shot. And, you know, I had to be a lot more cautious about the, the shots yeah. that I took because if it, if it was just too far away, the subject, or it was too close, I really had to, I couldn't zoom or anything like that. So I think it is, it's, I think it's good. It's not, it's a good lens, you know, for lots of different subjects, but I think it's a good lens to help you learn about composition yeah. and being thoughtful. So it's not so much the lens itself, but it's what it restricts you from doing. I think that kind of a good prime lens, you know, get a fast one as well. You can get them down to 1.8 F 1.4 yeah. as well. Can't you? So they're fairly shallow. That's the other advantage, obviously, is that they're much faster than uh, than a zoom lens. And I'd, I'd, like I said, you know, like I said before, I think fifty mm lens is a good good all round lens. If if you know, if you just want to take one camera and one lens around with you, yeah. uh, I would go for a fifty mm. And it was the one that was always used by uh, reportage photographers. Tend to you know stick to like the old classic uh, yeah. uh, Leica camera with a fifty mm lens would have been that's that's just that's what you would have had exactly. Yeah. Well, a movie. Moving up the, the focal length scale, um, the, the one of the kind of one of the other lenses that again a lot of people speak kind of um, think that you need all the time to have in your lens is a longer telephoto. So something maybe over about 150 mil, um, you know, from like a short telephoto and, and further upwards. But again, is that something that is just kind of you know it's horses for courses? It depends upon what you shoot or do you know? It, do you think it is an important lens to have in there, a long zoom or just a long focal length? I would say it, it all depends on what you're taking photos of, doesn't it? I mean, mm. you know, I guess if you've got the money and you want a full lens kit, it's quite nice to know that you've got uh, a telephoto lens or a longer lens. I'm not sure, you know, how long. I mean, we were talking about portrait photography before. I mean, I think you can get some nicer portraits on a longer lens, but I'm not yeah. sure 200 mil would be particularly useful. But say, I think a lot of portrait photographers favor an 85 mil lens yeah and or a hundred mil you know something over a hundred and i think that's quite a nice because you know particularly if you're just going for a you know a head and shoulders shot it's it's you get a nicer perspective it sort of flat things out and you get better proportions uh more than that i'm looking at obviously if you're interested in wildlife photography or sports photography or something where you can't get close maybe even photographing you know, if you wanted to be a paparazzi photographer, I don't think <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to go around recommending people do that. But uh, <laughs> a long, a long lens yeah. is, is essential, obviously. Exactly. But they're expensive. They're expensive to get a good, a good quality long lens. Yeah. I mean, so if you're a dedicated wildlife photographer, it's worth investing in a really good one. I'd say there's no point in buying a cheap one because the, I don't know, I, I don't know, quality of lenses I think has improved a lot over the years. But I know years ago buying a cheap lens was it was okay but it wasn't you know, I've had a quite a few cheap lenses in the past and you never got that you know they were never that sharp or you know there was a little bit bit dodgy and but when you're going up to the really expensive one I I've got which I never use um a 500 mil uh, mirror lens that that my dad used to use all the time which wow. is nice because it's it's short it's compact and it's really lightweight um, and I guess it would have been really expensive at the time. Um, but I never had a use for it because I'm not a wildlife photographer, whereas he was. So, you know, I've got it stashed away. Obviously, it's not going to fit on a on the camera that I've got now. But, um, <laughs> that you know, <laughs> but it was used to, he used it all the time. He used it all the time. And he preferred it to a long telephoto. He thought it just a mirror lens because it was easier to handhold. He didn't necessarily need a tripod. He photographed birds a lot. So it was yeah. an investment for him. I, 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 yeah, I, I fully agree with what you're saying because I think you're right. It's, it's got a place. It's not like the 50 mil that, as you say, you can go everywhere with you and, you know, whatever yeah. you shoot, you can, you know, you can get somewhat of a composition. But I think, you know, you are even more restricted because even at 150 mil, you're going to be a good kind of, you know, six foot plus, you know, further away from your subject to be able to get kind of a decent framing of it. Um, and then, yeah, you, so you've got to consider that, you know, if you're going into environments that are quite small, you, you're compacted, you know, those longer lenses are, are pretty useless to a large degree. So I think you've got to, you've got to know that you're going to make use of it because you, you're fully right. Yeah. I've, I've bought ones like Tamron lenses that are like two, 300 mil and, yeah, right. They weren't ex expensive and, you know, it showed it ultimately in the quality of yeah. the images. Not, I won't yeah. say I won't blame it on the photographer, of course, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's down to like, the quality of the lens. You get what you pay for these days. So it's it's not just a case of thinking that you need it because 
you can afford it is otherwise you know you can spend you know 200 pounds 300 dollars on another piece of kit you know that, that's yeah. just as essential you could buy a really good tripod a good flash etc don't don't just buy another lens because you think yeah. you can afford it it's really a case of do you need it and are you going to use it like you said like your dad had that 500 mil uh, yeah. mirror lens because yeah. you, you can use it all the time but you've got it but you don't use it at all so i think it's it's more of an important consideration to know whether you're going to use it that kind of length isn't it I'd say for a wildlife photographer, it's essential. And for a sports, you know, if you identify as a particular type of photographer with, you know, just one subject really like that, then it's essential, really. Yeah. And you might you might not even need a 50 mil lens if you just do that all the time. Um, but it, but at the same time, if you're going to do wildlife and sport, it has to be a really good quality one. Otherwise, there's no point. I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a cheaper lens would be OK, say, for doing sort of zoom you know sort of i don't know i quite like the flattening effect you get in portraits yeah so it's quite nice and i, I remember years ago i i did some assisting for um photography for littlewood's underwear catalog oh, wow. and... <laughs> i haven't heard that name well, for years <laughs> well i know it's it, littlewood's in manchester and it was uh the the photographer there obviously it was film so i just spent all my time sort of swap, changing film in the camera that was basically my job um and putting it back, putting it, setting it back up. But he used, I think, it was at least a 200 mil lens, maybe longer. Yeah. And he, he was in a long studio and stood way back from the models, which really right. surprised me because I just imagined it would have been, you'd have been much closer up, um, yeah. you know, say using a 50 mil lens or maybe a 85 mil lens. But he used a really long lens and was shot from a distance. I was say, was he trying to do it for compression? You know, that that's one benefit really was shooting that lens for portraits is to get that that quick you know um depth of field but did he ever explain yeah, why he went that possibly. long possibly well it was weird because it was just on a blank background it was oh, right. you know it was un underwear underwear and you kind of think well why did <laughs> i don't know i hadn't yeah. really didn't know why he was that I, I should have asked but you know it's one of those right. environments where you're a bit like oh i'm just going to do my job and then you're right it probably, it probably wouldn't give that much in the way of shape necessarily to the, yeah. to the body it, it is literally more a, a product shot yeah. it's it's a it's a yeah. as you say it's flattening really so maybe yeah. that's that's yeah, the yeah. approach they've gone for but yeah i, th I think yeah. you're, you're right it's good points there because Sorry. I think also they use them a lot they use them a lot in location work because they used to go out to I think they used to you know do a lot of the little wood shoots in Miami and there it would be for the location on beaches and things like that. And again, they'd use long lenses there to get that sort of uh, flattened perspective and to blur the backgrounds. Because yeah. obviously, if you're photographing clothes, you don't want the background to be distracting. So they want yeah. it. And that's another advantage of a long lens is that you can get you that really sort of uh, shallow depth of field quite easily yeah. with a long lens. I imagine as well, it would probably cut out a lot of distractions if the you know yeah. location was quite busy. You know, they could have them at a yeah. distance, get the depth yeah. of field, but still be fairly narrow in terms of the frame and not have yeah. passers by walking through disrupting it really but um the the other kind of um i suppose um corner of this i would say holy trinity of lenses a lot of people talk about is a good wide lens so we're trying to kind of basically cover all different areas we're going from wide to kind of you know average let's say kind of 50 to 85 mil with a good prime and then your long telephoto so i mean with a, a wide obviously you know the, the basis is that it kind of just covers the whole range of the shot or the whole range of the scene that you're looking at but would you say there's a, a kind of a you know a good level of wide you know what kind of focal length we should be at and you know is there a point that we can go too wide just that it looks silly um i say again with your the stat, you know a, a normal camera 30 mil camera uh probably no wider than 35 mil i think yeah. i you know i used to use 35 mil a fair bit. I used to use it quite often uh, on my old cameras, and uh, thirty-five mils all right because it it doesn't distort things too much, and mm -hmm. it means you can get say if you're out and about, you can get more of a more of a scene in without it distorting too much. Yeah. Um, and also it can be quite creative because I found doing some, you know, doing documentary stuff working with people you can get some quite interesting kind of perspectives by going in quite close and some people further away and you, you're sort of changing that perspective and you can add you can kind of add drama to 
closer up shots of groups of people doing things. Mm. So I found it was nice for activities. So with people, say if you were doing somebody doing street art or, or something like that, you could find a, an interesting angle and kind of, you know, get a certain amount of distortion from it. And you could yeah. obviously emphasize that by going even wider, you know, so to a 28 mil or something. And then to the extreme of a, of a fisheye lens. But um, I think fisheye lenses are kind of limited in their uses. It's really yeah. just a special effects lens. Yeah, I, I think but you're I right. Think, They've got its yeah. sort of purposes, and you, you, you'll you'll love it or you hate it. It's it's like a marmite yeah, lens, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Really, I I think yeah, I used to have yeah, one yeah. years ago, but it I, even yeah. I didn't. You know, it, the effect didn't rub off on me. I think if you've got if you've yeah. got the right subject, you know, if it's you know, yeah. I think in like you know, it could it could have a bit on sports, or it does make it quite humorous again, depending upon your subject. But I've seen it used in kind of like urban sports, and it's quite cool. But yeah, I, I think it's at well, that point, which is probably like. 12 mil and under um yeah it's it's probably a bit too much for me <laughs> yeah. i'd say really. well you can get those wacky wacky shots can't you with a dog's yeah. nose in the <laughs> you know distorted with a dog's face all around with this huge red nose those kind of things that it's good for humor and yeah. uh, and special effects and but i'd say again any more than 35 35 mils are useful mm. but any more than that it is not so useful i would yeah. say i used to use the 35 mil quite a lot and it, I bought a good one, you know, so it was decent. You know, so it was a good quality, so a fixed thirty-five mil lens. Yeah, I think because, that's sorry. And also, you're wanting um, as fast a possible lens, really. If you're if you're buying a prime lens, go for the fastest you can afford because mm. that's the big advantage. And I thought, yeah. you know, we should really talk about zoom lenses as well, shouldn't we? And yeah, indeed. Because I mean, that I suppose that now is more of. Well, it, it's more commonplace in the digital yeah. photography market that you could get massive zooms. You can get literally zooms that go from like 60 mil, 16 mil to maybe like 100. And you think, well, yeah. that pretty much covers, you know, most of what we've been talking about. And you think, well, do I just yeah. need one lens yeah. as opposed to three dedicated lenses, really? But it's, yeah. it's the pros and cons yeah. with, I mean, you know, have you ever found like pros and cons with zoom lenses over um the primes I th yeah well obviously you know quality wise they generally in the past zoom lenses could be a bit clunky i think they've improved a lot over recent years so mm -hmm. i think quality wise you're probably not looking at too much of a difference the main the main thing is your actual aperture isn't it yeah. i mean i've got I, re I remember in the in the part when i when i used to go traveling i had a lot of lenses that I wouldn't take, but what I would take with me, I took a 35, I think it was 35 to 80 mil zoom. And I took a 70 to 210 mil zoom with me that kind of covered everything yeah. with two lenses. Rather than having a bag full of lenses, I thought, right, I'm going to cut that right down and just take two zoom lenses that kind of cover most of what I need. So mm. and th that I found quite useful. Um, I think these days in retrospect if if i was going out traveling and carrying i would minimize what i took because i what i would want to photograph would probably be quite you know i know much more what i want to i i would probably just stick to a 50 mil lens now mm -hmm. because i like i'd like to be limited i'd like to just think right this is what i've got so if i'm taking photos it's gonna have to fit into that and for traveling and stuff like that, obviously for specialist uh, uses, it's different because you need different lenses. Yeah. On, you know, what yeah. It's for. yeah. If you, if you know what a, you're going for, then yeah. Yeah, I think you, you need to you know, pack ahead effectively. Cause I've got yeah. more about kind of four or five lenses with my camera. And, and there's, um, if, I, if it was literally, if it was to narrow it down to two to take out, I, I would be kind of somewhat, I think I'd probably take like my 16 to 55, like my little kind of rugged kit lens, just because yeah. I know that's, I'd say it's a bit of a workhorse, but it, it gives me a little bit of range, as you say. And then I've also got a 55 to 210. So I'm pretty much covered from like yeah. 16 mil right up over 200. Um, so it gives me kind of quite a wide spread. I mean, they may not be the better quality lenses in comparison to other ones that I have but if it's yeah. just a case of wanting to make sure and i can't go back and change lenses later on i've covered the basis as you know really in that sense and just got to do as, as best job as i can well when i when i bought my um digital camera that like a decent digital camera the first one that i got the canon um because i'd not really you know, I kind of thought I hadn't really used a lot of the lenses that I have in the past. There were certain ones that, that I tended to go for all the time. And because of what I 
tend to photograph, which tends to be people portraits, and um, nothing. I don't know. I don't do don't do wildlife. I don't do sports. Any things like that. So rather than go for the fixed, it, it came. You could either select a fifty mil lens or a seventeen to eighty five mil. Uh, macro lens so I went for the 17 to 85 mil because I thought that would work really well it would cover portraits but yeah. even the photography and enable me to do you know some interiors and stuff like that for an, an architecture as well with a wider lens although you know you have to deal with the distortion then but then you can compensate for that to some extent now on photoshop so it's not such an issue yeah that's it a lot of the times they have uh, like lens calibration options in lightroom yeah. so any distortion that you have i've got a, a 16 mil which it, it does have a little bit of problems at the end but I, I know i can compensate and i know because of that uh distortion i try to keep anything <laughs> important off the end of the shots and you know just crop it in if, if it yeah. needs to be so it's i mean I that you, just, you know obviously sorry i'll just the disadvantage is the um aperture because i think it only stops down to about is it four or something f4 like 4.5 or five and 5.6 i think yeah so that that's but what i find is that you can still get if you if you you know going close because it will go really cl close as a macro lens you can isolate things with depth of field and get some pretty pretty good bokeh in the background if you want if you want to close up to things um, yeah maybe not so much as a portrait or you know from a distance obviously but um for close-up shots you can do that so well, it, that's it's quite it. a versatile little lens if you know how to use it right if you've got yeah. if you've got an appropriate amount of light then yeah i mean f4 can still give you a, a lovely depth of field you just yeah. got to have the the right settings for it but otherwise if you you tend to work indoors more then yeah you may probably find having like a, a faster prime lens something that stops down to 1.6 1.4 something like that is probably going to be more yeah. beneficial so if, yeah i think it, i think it always comes back down to if you know what you like to shoot but if you're a beginner i suppose taking away from this we'd say a good 50 millimeter prime is is going to be kind of a good all-round option a longer telephoto again it's really down to a consideration of are you going to use it it's not just a case of buying it and then go oh, i'm not going to use it a lot because you could spend your money better elsewhere um but a wide lens again it is useful to cover a bit more basis but try not to go much wider than as you say around about 30 35 millimeters and that's again taken into yeah. consideration um any crop factors that are on your camera whether you're full frame or on a, on a crop sensor really but i think that's kind of a, a fair assessment really isn't it of, of kind of like basic uh, entry level lenses and maybe sure. what you need in your kit bag isn't it yeah, and I think it's it's good not to, you know not to have too much choice or not to have too much stuff because <laughs> you'll always then be tempted to throw it all in the bag and it's heavy and it's yeah. like oh I'll take it. just in case I need it oh should I take that mm, yeah I better take that as well and you exactly. end up taking everything and then you you think no it's it's too much it's I mean, the photographer's I, curse <laughs> yeah yes it's the same as taking too much too many photos really isn't it I mean with, yeah and I find with digital it's become more of an issue because it's so tempting just to shoot off so many shots and then yeah. spend hours going through them and think why did I take so many because it's <laughs> taken me forever to edit and, and figure out you know which one I like best and they're all yeah. practically the same shot <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, the other thing, I I mean, in terms of what I've got, like I said, I've got that lens on my camera that I just keep on as standard. If it's going to buy another lens now, I mean, this is just because of the what I'm interested in and because I'm interested in fine art, creative photography, portraits, that kind of thing. Um, I would go for a tilt shift lens oh, wow. or one of those um i'm looking at those lens babies and thinking yeah. about getting one of those because i've always liked the distortion that you get from a tilt shift lens and i remember when i was studying one of the things i liked about uh learning to use a large format plate camera uh was the bellows and being able to sort of do the tilt shift and alter yeah. alter your sort of focal plane and stuff like that and it was a creative thing that that i always felt that was missing from a 35 mm camera and you couldn't get lenses that would do that they also had a really old lens from the 1920s 1930s that had a sort of a little lever on it and you could uh, if you slid the lever around it would gradually put the lenses out of 
plain so you'd get this weird sort of soft focus effect and they used it a lot for that kind of portraiture in the 1930s and i've seen some of the lens baby effects and they're very similar so yeah i'd probably be looking at at getting something like that i think just because I've, of the creative potential there i think you're yeah i i've i've used them before um in shooting portraiture it was one of the original lens babies when they were just starting coming out um forgotten which model it was but it literally had kind of three prongs and, and you were able literally by holding the camera and then your fingers around the front of the lens literally pushing it with your left and right kind of um index finger and being able yeah. to shift the focal plane it was a nightmare to yeah. use you had to be <laughs> so switched on as you say yeah. because the focal right. plane is shifting yeah. and obviously everything's backwards um but it's a real it's a challenge definitely but the effect yeah. it gives when you get it right yeah. um are amazing I've, we've got one student in um, our eye photography gallery um, called Steve Fleetwood, who is a big user of them, and I've I've been kind of following yeah, his work I've for the past year. Shots. And there's some of them, I would say some admittedly, and he'll admit as well, sometimes they maybe haven't worked strongly, but it's an exploration yeah. of technique. You know, you never know what uh, subject matter is going to work best for them. But he took some yeah. of art down at a beach recently, um, and they were brilliant. It, as you say, it looked yeah, they were like great. fine art. When they yeah. cracking. I really like those when I saw those as well. And I do think it's important not to, not to overdo those kind of things. It's kind of keeping it to a level that doesn't look as if you've pushed it too far. And I tried recreating those effects on Photoshop, you know, a few years back because I liked it. And it's never the same when you no. sort of blur parts of the shot. You just cannot get that same because it works on in terms of how far something is away from you. You can't re recreate that. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could if you spent ages separating it out into layers and blurring different layers. And a friend of mine did that once. It took him forever and it still didn't look right. So no. it was a bit like now, now you can get these lenses. Um, that's uh, yeah, that's I think that's most likely what i would what i would invest in next in yeah. terms of get, getting a new lens but there's a that... lot of them so it's hard now they, they mm. seem to make a whole range of them and oh. i guess there's going to be other people doing them as well so i'm going to have to have a good route around and see what's available and i know canon do their own tilt shift lenses as well have a similar effect it's a bit more not quite as special effecty but um yeah, yeah. And I've, I, there was a... architecture obviously yeah it, tilt shift is another one I find, I, you know, generally photographing buildings, I like to have things, I like to go either to an extreme uh, and get them really distorted, you know, at a wacky angle, or <laughs> I like to have everything straight up. Yeah. And that's the hard one to do because you can never get high enough up unless you climb up a ladder or stand on top of a car or something, <laughs> <laughs> which I have done. Not, not my own car, not somebody else's. I, I was going to say, well, yeah, we'll, 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 kind of, uh, we'll not endorse kind of standing on uh, people's cars to go and get photographs. <laughs> but uh, We used, to, we used yeah. to do it on top of a van when I used to go around photographing buildings for, for architects. We used to get up on top of the van that we used to drive around and just photograph them oh, from a God. tripod on top of the van because it's the they, only way you could get get yeah high enough. i think they do that um or at least i've seen them do that and, and rachel tutor rachel may be able to say but on like yeah. wildlife safaris you know they, they get up high to be able to kind of be yeah. a little more, more at eye level to to some animals uh, like elephants sure. and, and etc as well so yeah. it is quite useful yeah. But, yeah. but yeah overall just you know play it play it safe if anybody's listening yeah. we're not endorsing yeah. going standing yeah. on vans and moving cars etc <laughs> photography but but there yeah. we go so we've yeah. had uh, a really good little natura i I've really enjoyed that just to kind of get an idea of you know what lenses you know are, are quite useful to have in your, in your camera bag really but if yeah. anybody's listening to this and they've got different impressions or they've got different experiences of any of the lenses we've talked about um then get in touch you can find us across social media everywhere and obviously you can check out iPhotography.com if you want to know a little bit more Specifically, we've got a page now set up for podcast listeners. So if you go to uh, learn.iphotography.com forward slash podcast, you can find offers on our different courses, memberships, and some products. Um, if you want to get involved in the community and find out a little bit more. But uh, for yeah, for this evening, I just want to say thank you very much, Nick, for joining me. And I hope You're welcome. You it. And I'm sure there'll be more yeah, anyway. Good. We'll be doing because there's there is tons yeah. more episodes to come, and there's there's loads more already in the archive. So if this is the first time that you're listening to a podcast or if you've been watching this as a youtube video um then please 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 check out them check out the rest you know subscribe and follow um we greatly appreciate it always 
Um, but yeah. How about a no? Le- how about a no lens photography one? <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. Look, shooters like pin, pin, pin pinhole. Hole, yeah, you know, <laughs> doing your own pinhole photos. Stuff well, there like we that. go. Is that something else that's quite interesting? I think that's another episode that we can write. We can write some notes up for it, and maybe come back in a few weeks and, uh, yeah. and give people directions about how to how to kind of create pinhole photography. So there you go. That that that's your job for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll start, I'll start working on that now then. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for listening and we will see you in the future. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye.